Hi, I'm Patricia Grabarek. And I'm Katina Sawyer, and welcome to the Worker Being Podcast. Today, I am going to be talking about an article that has to do with forgiveness in the workplace. Um, Mm -hmm. But before we get to that, just a little bit about how you're doing today. I'm doing well. Um, Cool weather makes me feel kind of in the holiday spirit, so that's nice. Um, Nothing super crazy going on, but yeah. It's things are going well. Things are good. Good. How about, good. how about you? Yeah, everything is good. I just had a chance to spend some time with some friends that we both know uh, from graduate school. So, I'm so uh, that was very nice. <laughs> no, it was so nice. I know it was really nice. Um, uh, I have a funny uh, thing to relay that I told them actually um, that uh-huh. happened to me today. So I had my very last uh, physical therapy appointment today. So Yay. I'm like discharged. I'm free. Um, but uh, I had a PSYOP. So like for listeners that don't know, although many of our listeners may know, PSYOP is the professional association that we belong to as industrial organizational psychologists. And it's the Society for Industrial Organizational Psychology. But at my very last appointment, I was wearing a PSYOP T-shirt. And <laughs> uh, this I know. <laughs> And this woman, uh, as I, so I did like my whole workout today in this PSYOP t-shirt. And then on the way out, this woman like stopped me and she was like, I have to ask you, I've been seeing you work out this whole hour and I'm wondering what is slop 2016? <laughs> <laughs> slop. And I was like dying that the whole time she thought I had a shirt on that said slop 2016. <laughs> That is so funny. It's like I'm very pro slop. I <laughs> I was in 2016. I was very into slop. All about the slop. <laughs> it's all about the slop. I got over it, but you know, I was very into the slop several years ago. But I just thought it was so funny that she was like, "What is slop 2016?" <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh so I told our goodness. friends that because they're also part of slop. <laughs> and <laughs> they liked it <laughs> and they would appreciate it yeah yes. that's really funny so that is really funny we found that amusing this evening i find it amusing too <laughs> well i'm glad that we are not members of slop but members yeah. of psyop instead i appreciate we're not part of slop that <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man i liked it um so anyway i had fun it was a good time and that's about it um, anything exciting going on with you? Any, uh, anyone comment on your slop t-shirt? Lately? <laughs> <laughs> no slop comments. Um, I am slop free. Good. Nice. Uh, yeah. I mean, not a lot. I can't say that there's anything super exciting. We're, you know, just gearing up for the holidays and figuring out gifts and all those things. Um, I mean, I just can't believe it's all upon us at this point. I know it's It's, nutty. Yeah. Like this year has flown by. I feel like 2019 lasted a month, not a year. It doesn't make any sense to me. It totally did. No, I completely agree with you. It's crazy. But anyways, so I mean, kind of all that usual stuff. Um, This week has just been really busy with work. So I've kind of kept a low profile in my evenings, which has been good and helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So nice. that's it. Trucking along. But now I want to hear about glad. forgiveness. So tell yeah. me all the things. Okay. So this article is very, very new. Yay. It was published only a few months ago and in the Journal of Occupational and Organizational Psychology. And it is called Forgiveness in Leader Member Exchange Relationships, Mediating and Moderating Mechanisms. And it's by Anna Radulovic. Jeff Thomas, Olga Epitropaki, and Allison Legood. And um, basically the take-home message of this paper is that forgiveness is actually important for well-being for you as the forgiver when your leader makes a mistake at work. So interesting. I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense that you forgiving somebody else 
is related to wellness, right? Because you're not holding on to these negative emotions and this resentment. Um, but I love this interesting dynamic in the workplace. So it's about a, an employee forgiving their leader. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's so interesting. So tell me more. Yeah. So basically, in general, I mentioned the term leader member exchange, which I know you know what it is, but <laughs> everybody listening. Uh, the idea is that there are certain leaders and followers that have higher quality relationships than others. It's a little bit of a contested theory, um, particularly from a diversity and inclusion standpoint, because how you decide who is the person you're going to have a better relationship with um, is a little bit contested. But regardless, the data shows that leaders have better relationships with some people than other people. And I think that's probably true um, in most people's experiences with leaders. So leaders have better relationships with some people than other people. And regardless of why that might be true, people who have better relationships with their leaders tend to be happier on the job and tend to have better well-being um, in their lives than people who have worse relations with their leaders. So that's just basically true, that if you have a better relationship with your leader, you tend to have, you know, better attitudes about your life and about your work. But every leader is bound to mess up at some point. And so maybe this resonates with people who are in leadership positions like, you know, you're trying your best, but every now and again you might make a mistake or you might go off course and then you feel responsible to the people that work for you to kind of make up for that. So leaders will make mistakes. No leader is perfect. And this particular article is honed in on whether or not you as a follower can forgive your leader for that mistake actually makes a difference in the way that you behaviorally respond. So like I decide that I forgive you and then to show you that I forgive you, I'm going to make more efforts to basically make our relationship better in the face of the mistake that you made. And if I'm able to do that, Even when I have a positive relationship with you, my relationship with you goes up. So Hmm. it's better when you have a good relationship with someone not to hold them too accountable for making mistakes, to forgive them for their mistake, and to take some steps to try to bridge that gap in the relationship. Um, And if you do that, you'll be happier than if you didn't before. Okay, so if I'm an employee and my boss does something not cool, whatever that might be. The goal is for me to come to terms with that and forgive Mm -hmm. them. But I'm assuming, does do they even talk about whether or not the leader is sorry for the mistake? They don't. So this is separate from the apology literature, which basically looks at whether or not leaders express forgiveness. This is more, am I as a person capable of saying people make mistakes and I am going to kind of consider this a mistake on the part of the leader. Now in there were two studies in the paper and in the second study they controlled for the frequency and the severity of the mistake. And so what they found was even when controlling for that uh, being able to forgive a leader helps you to Make efforts to bridge the relationship back to normal, which makes you feel better about your job. Mm -hmm. Um, So this is just an initial study. So obviously, like, it isn't, you know, a meta-analysis or anything like that. But what they found is that forgiveness helps um, regardless of the situation that you're in. Okay, cool. So I forgive my leader for whatever they did and am able to move past it and try to rebuild that relationship and then as I do that, I will feel better. Yes. Um, they talk about the reasons behind that. I mean, I have some ideas and I'm sure you do too. But are there any um, notes on why people feel better? Yeah. So forgiveness is supposed to be a change in mindset towards someone that makes a mistake. And they basically argue that the reason that forgiveness works is because it reduces the negative way that you feel about the person and increases the positive way that you feel about the person um and it a lot in and in doing that in like changing your mindset around the way that you feel 
it allows people to kind of overcome like thinking about how they want to like get back at that person or avoid that person. But instead to be like, well, you know, I understand that people make mistakes and I see this person as a broader extension of the way that I think about the world being kind of a balance of people trying to do good stuff and sometimes not doing good stuff. So it's more like I think about the broader grand scheme of things over the course Mm -hmm. of time. This person wants to do good things. Maybe right now I'm not happy with them, but does that mean they're not a good person? No. Whereas like if you just dwelled on that negative event, you would feel like I want, I, you could ruminate on it and then feel like I need to pay, pay back that bad action or I need to get like, stop talking to that person or I need to avoid contact with that person. Whereas forgiveness is like, you know, sometimes people don't do things that I agree with or that feel good for me, but I'm going to recognize this is like part of a broader pattern of how humans behave and I'm going to be okay with the fact that this negative behavior happened. Okay. So I'm, I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I think the whole idea about rumination and dwelling on a negative thing, like obviously the more you dwell on these negative things, the worse it is. Um, if you're sitting there focusing on the negative, you're obviously not going to be feeling very well. Your well being would go down. And if you just move past it, let go and move on, um, you can get back to a more positive place with that person. And then when you see them, you're not gonna be thinking about this bad thing, you're gonna be thinking more positive things. And so obviously, if this is your leader, you're interacting with them to some extent, relatively frequently. So you need to have that positive relationship because, or you would want that positive relationship so that you can have a positive experience at work. And you're not constantly being reminded of the bad when you're there and when you're talking to them. Because you can't avoid talking to your boss. Um, for her very long that would be a lot right yeah and I think what they're basically saying is if you have a pre-existing positive relationship with your boss then you are more likely to forgive that person and you're more likely as a result of forgiving them to try to bridge that relationship so if your boss just stinks right like they're just not good Mm -hmm. It's not a forgiveness story. This is like an incompetence story or it's some other story where you and your boss are just not meshing and there are problems with your relationship. This story is more about when you have a good relationship um, with your boss and they make a mistake or they make an error that forgiveness under those circumstances is helpful. Generally, Mm -hmm. if you have a really bad relationship with your boss, your well-being and your satisfaction goes down, right? And your Mm -hmm. ability to forgive goes down because you just have generally a bad relationship. But the kind of the take-home point, I guess, from a forgiveness standpoint is that if you generally feel positively and feel like you have a high-quality relationship with your boss, then when you forgive them, it, you know, for, for transgressions, even if they more frequently make them or when they make them, they're more severe, Like if you have a high quality relationship, forgiveness is usually the better route to go because if you hang on to it, you're not going to allow those positive things to continue coming through. So I'm just like envisioning an example, right? So let's say I'm working on a project with my boss, my leader, and we're in a meeting with a lot of people and uh, they basically take one of my ideas as their own, right? So that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. That's a thing that would upset me. Um, and I might be mad at them for that. And, but I have a good relationship with my boss and generally I feel like they're supportive and they're helping me and we get along and we can talk and be relatively open. So we have a good relationship. So the goal for me then would be to walk away from that. Um, I mean, realistically it'd be good to address it, but if you can't or whatever, if they don't recognize they did it, whatever happens, there's you know, there's a communication factor, but ideally I walk away from that meeting and I don't dwell on it. I forgive the person. I move on. I continue to build that relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's interesting that you brought up that example. It's almost, (laughs) I feel like I was like, did you read this article? But I know you didn't. Um, (laughs) No, I didn't. So they did one field study across eight different country contexts Mm -hmm. and found that this model holds that 
when you have a good relationship with your leader, you're more likely to forgive the leader. You're more likely to take action as a result of forgiving them to try to like rebuild that relationship. And then you're happier and your well-being goes up. But they also did a lab study, which basically manipulated. It's really interesting. Um, manipulated uh, the extent to which uh, your manager kind of puts you on the line um, and uh, puts you in a difficult situation in front of other people, which is kind of similar to what you talked about in terms of like mm-hmm. taking credit for a uh, an idea, you know, kind of a public way of uh, sort of uh, showing up the person. So the specific incident that they introduced um, was trying to get exactly at that, that the person kind of in public ignored you and tried to say that they were responsible for the success of the team. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So that was what people read through. Um, and so they kind of manipulate the extent to which you have a good working relationship with the person or have a bad working relationship with the person. Um, and then they ask you whether or not you forgive them for this particular offense, which is taking credit for your work. Um, and then after that's done, they also read part about how the organization reacted to the incident. So part of the story for the lab study is not just about whether or not you're able to forgive the person, but it's also about whether or not the organization um, is one which encourages people to forgive each other. So another layer within the the lab study that you just picked up on is, yeah, if someone takes credit for your work, you're going to be upset. But if generally your relationship with them is good, you're going to be more likely to forgive them and more likely to take efforts to, you know, rebuild that relationship. But you're especially likely to do that when the organization is one that encourages people to forgive each other as opposed to one that it kind of is more neutral in tone or negative towards forgiveness. I mean, that makes sense. It's kind of gets back to these ideas of like psychological safety, which I know we've talked about before. Where, you know, people feel comfortable speaking up and taking risks and making mistakes and knowing they're not going to be punished for, you know, a mistake here and there. Uh, So in those situations, it makes sense that you are primed to be a person that will forgive others because other people are forgiving you. And there's this culture of mistakes are not the end of the world. Um, So it makes a lot of sense to me. And I think, I mean, I think those types of work environments are very effective in a lot of ways and yeah a lot better for wellness in so many different ways like psychological safety is super important um so this kind of plays on that is what I'm hearing and what I'm thinking is that these organizations where you are allowed to make a mistake without major repercussions unless of course you know it's a like you said before a competence issue where it's a constant thing or something like that but I think it's I think it's great that having that environment supports it even more because obviously yeah. not only are you forgiving your leader but that probably means your leader has forgiven you for things and your team members have forgiven you for things and so you're able to continue to build this relationship in this environment where not everyone's going to be okay but all the time not doing the right thing every single second but we're able to move past it and understand that people aren't doing things necessarily intentionally um Mm -hmm. unless you see a pattern which is a different story but without that pattern it's taking people for the best like looking at them in the best possible light so yeah i i think that's awesome yeah so like in the situation where people are feeling supported by their leader which makes them more likely to forgive Things like feeling like their leader knows, like they know where they stand with their leader. Their leader understands their problems and their needs. They recognize their potential. They feel like they don't abuse their power. Um, They feel like they would like bail them out of a bad situation if they needed that support. Mm -hmm. Um, That they would like defend them or justify their decisions um, if they weren't present to be there to do that themselves. Um, And that generally they would feel that their relationship was good. But in terms of whether or not the person forgives the other person um, at like the interpersonal level, um, the kinds of things that they're interested in from a forgiveness perspective are things like, um, so there are like a couple different dimensions, but basically it's like, um, 
do I tend to give people the cold shoulder? Am I quick to forgive them? Uh, do I find a way to make people regret leaving me out of things? So there's uh, like benevolence. There's avoidance. There's retaliation. So those are all kinds of things that are like involved in the forgiveness aspect. Mm -hmm. um, so if you feel like the person supports you, you're more likely to be like, you know what? I actually, you know, would not give them the cold shoulder. Maybe I'd be more likely to approach them and talk about it. I'd be quicker to forgive them. I wouldn't try to go out of my way to make that person feel badly about what they did. Um, but when we're talking about the culture that supports it, that makes it even more likely that people would do those things. Some of the things that they ask people about are like, does the organization encourage people to be patient when dealing with problems? Um, do they facilitate conversations that would lead to relationship repair? Um, do they show an interest in employees' concerns and help people to get through struggles they might be having? Um, do they restore the dignity of the person that has, like, suffered this offense and say, like, yes, this is important, but you also need to recognize that people make mistakes. And so the kind of narrative that the organization has around forgiveness makes it even more likely that a person who has a really good relationship with their leader will be likely to be like, you know, I'm not going to just avoid this person. I'm not going to try to take it out on them. I'm going to be quicker to be like, you know what? That was a mistake and let's move on. That makes a lot of sense. The whole like idea of people are people and they make mistakes and making sure that's a part of the culture um, will encourage people that were likely to forgive to do it even more. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of the main takeaway is that forgiveness is important. But I think that we don't think about forgiveness in the workplace very much. I think that a lot mm -hmm. of what happens at work is that people feel frustrated and hold things inside and maybe they like vent to other people, which we know that there's benefits to venting as well. But if you ruminate, like there's a difference between venting and ruminating. Like when you like get something out because you have to like be realistic or authentic with another person about how you're feeling, that's one thing. But if like you're sitting and thinking about something for a long time and you're letting it kind of rule how you approach that person or um, or you don't approach that person, you're just avoiding that person, like those kinds of things are really detrimental to the workplace. And so I haven't seen a lot about the importance of saying, you know what, I'm not going to avoid this person. I'm going to recognize that they make mistakes. I'm not going to think about how to get back at this person. I'm just going to say we generally have a good relationship. If I was in their position, I'd probably make mistakes too. And let's just move forward and try to, um, you know, I'm going to be the one that takes the proactive steps to rebuild this relationship uh, to make sure that things are positive moving forward. And the interesting thing is by me putting out that energy to rebuild that relationship, I actually reap a benefit. I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense just think about relationships in general, right? I think it is applicable in a lot of ways to relationships overall that understanding people make mistakes and not dwelling on it helps you so much to move past it and continue that relationship and making sure you put in that effort because well there's a couple of factors here like one does my leader know I'm mad right mm -hmm. if I retaliate or if I start ignoring them or doing stuff like that they may then recognize that I'm mad or upset about something but then it's already started to damage the relationship because I'm not just telling them or being upfront or I'm doing these negative things when instead I can just reroute that energy to doing something more positive to continue to build that relationship so that maybe if it's a mistake like taking credit or something that's more based on me instead of based on a task, then maybe they'll do those less. Or maybe if I continue right. building that relationship, I can bring it to their attention in a positive way. Um, I think there's a lot of benefits to have building that relationship and, and making that effort to make sure you're continuing to grow that previously positive relationship so that it can get even more positive. I think if you avoid it and do all those different things, you're going to hurt the relationship and then and then what situation are you in not only are you upset about a mistake and you're ruminating on it and you're focusing on it and you're thinking about it all the time and that obviously makes you feel bad but then you're also destroying a relationship that's very important at work 
That relationship Mm -hmm. is critical to your success because you need the support. You need the resources that person has. Um, They're going to be the ones giving your performance reviews, everything like that. Like you're going to damage a relationship that's critical for your own success. So why would you do that? If it's a positive relationship overall, it makes no sense to just derail it because you're upset about one thing. Um, Yeah. So it's like a maturity piece. Like if, if you need help to forgive when you get in a situation like that, I think it's really important for people to reflect on these things, like reflect on the positive that this person has had in your life. Like what positive effect have they had? What has that relationship been like before? And then think about what would happen if you continue to be angry and degrade that relationship and how will that impact your career? And that's probably yeah. not going to be a good impact. So then you're going to just continue this spiral of negativity that's going to make you feel awful and really reduce your wellness when instead you can reverse that spiral and start focusing on the positive and building out that relationship where you're going to continue to create more positivity for yourself and therefore more wellness. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And I also think that sometimes it's difficult, you know, it's not giving an excuse to leaders at all because there's, you know, a reason why they're in leadership positions because they can handle it. But there's a lot of stress and complication that comes from being in a leadership position. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes it can be difficult to understand all of that pressure and stress and competing, uh, you know, priorities that you have about how you make decisions. Like, you could be a great, a great manager, but also be kind of in a tough spot with what your leadership's telling you to do. And it can be hard to balance all of those different demands. And so I think, you know, they didn't get into this in the article, but it would be interesting to look at like what people view as a mistake versus, you know, what people view as an infraction versus what a leader views as like just a tough situation that they didn't have a lot of other choices around, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to also think about that perspective. Like, is it really the case that all, you know, all people are being viewed within that lens of like, let me take their perspective and see what's difficult for them, which is part of what forgiveness has to do with is like, let me just think about it from a different, a different angle. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense because it's not, you know, the example we gave is somebody forgetting you in some way or forgetting to mention you or, taking an idea with that maybe hopefully right. without realizing it but there's other things that happen like you said that might be coming from other levels you know that might be a reaction because of something else that's happening you know we always want to think about and reflect on what other people are doing and why they're behaving that way and I think we've talked about this before when it comes to things like emotional labor right like if you have a really negative customer why are they negative it's probably not you so right like how can you try to think imagine that person's emotions and imagine that maybe they're dealing with something terrible and that's why they're acting that way it's not okay but then at least you can try to remove yourself from the situation I feel like it's similar here where you want to make sure that you are um, removing yourself from the situation and thinking about that person and their perspective. And I think the takeaway here, um, is that, you know, that's really hard to do. And like you said, you don't want to make excuses for mistakes that people make, but understanding that they do make mistakes and then understanding that it's actually a big deal for you to hold on to those things like right it's not worth it it's not worth it for yourself to hold on to the mistake that the person made that made you feel a certain way that wasn't positive or you know hurt your feelings or made you feel angry whatever that is you know it's important to think that okay if I hold on to this it's going to impact my day my week my wellness right so why do that like right take that cost that conscious effort to move past it. Right. And we're not talking about, again, like in a situation where you're a leader and you have a really bad relationship, your job satisfaction and your well-being is going to go down regardless. So like this is kind of more about a story about how to enhance a good relationship, I think, uh, is Mm -hmm. about being forgiving um, and less about, you know, trying to figure out how to fix a bad relationship. Um, Mm -hmm. Because you also don't want to get it to be like at the point where, you know, you've forgiven a person and forgiven them and forgiven them. And like 
you can't continue to do that forever and ever like that will get super frustrating so I think yeah so I think like this is more about as you're saying if you've got somebody good figuring out like yeah I need to focus on that I need to be clear that I'm in a positive work relationship with my boss and if they make a mistake we're all human and you would want people to do the same thing for you I think it's interesting because um, I'm sure that when you make a mistake or when I make a mistake or anybody makes a mistake like you hope that people will view the broader picture Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think it's just like a human thing to want people to view the broader picture about them but it's hard when you're doing it for somebody else because um, you know you're living in the impact of whatever it is that's upsetting you Um, but it's definitely important to kind of think about what's the actual whole story instead of just how you're feeling right now. So I think we've covered the key takeaways for an individual yes. and what they should do. And I think for a leader, you know, obviously if you're a leader that has a, a leader that's applies to everybody that has a leader, right? A manager mm-hmm. of some sort. And then I think I'd love to hear your thoughts, but seems like from an organizational perspective what you're saying is that creating that climate that culture where people can make mistakes and it's okay and you forgive them Mm -hmm. is really important yeah so some of their suggestions for practice are that organizations should give everyone first of all they should give all leaders intervention to encourage high quality relationships so a big part of this is that you need to have a good relationship going into it. So Mm -hmm. some of the onus is on leaders to make sure that, Hey, if you want to be forgiven for mistakes that you make, you have to make sure that you're not operating from a place of deficit, right? Like you have to build good relationships. Um, But the other part of it that they recommend is that organizations should implement training um, to help promote forgiveness as a strategy. Um, And so part of that are some of the things that um, I had mentioned before, like uh, trying to intervene when problems happen and promoting like a calm and rational way of problem solving, um, helping people to repair relationships. So if people are having a problem instead of ignoring it for a long time to try to actually step in and have somebody kind of intervene and uh, play a role in reconstructing that relationship and Mm -hmm. and showing that they find that that's important. Um, Showing an interest when people are concerned about uh, mistakes that their leaders have made and helping people understand how to communicate that and feeling good about themselves. Like it's not your fault that you're upset about this, but let's think of a productive way uh, to deal with it. Um, And then also not holding people like not being in like a cancel culture just for like singular mistakes in the organization overall. So are they taking more of a learning approach? Um, If you make a mistake, is the organization like, that's it, we're done with you? Or are they like, okay, that was not a mistake that we favored, but generally your performance has been good. So let's figure out how we can learn from that mistake um, and, you know, make you feel good about your role in the organization. All of those things uh, help organizations to be more focused on forgiveness compared to the opposite where it's like, we deal with things completely emotionally. We ignore relationship problems. We don't listen to employees when they have concerns. We don't validate people's concerns about errors that were made. We treat one mistake as if it's the end of the world and totally ostracize someone who's a good performer, even if they make one mistake. Um, and we have no discussion around, you know, building good relationships at all. Like that would be the opposite of an organization that cultivates forgiveness. So, they're kind of pushing that organizations should have these structures in place um, in order to support the, you know, even greater um, benefits of having a positive relationship is having a positive relationship in which when mistakes are made, you're able to kind of move on. I mean, I think it's important advice beyond just the forgiveness literature that we're talking about here. I think everything that we talk about when it comes to diversity and inclusion, when it comes to relationships with your peers and your leader, when it comes to just a positive work environment, everything that they've suggested really ties into all of those things. And all of those things tie back to 
you feeling good at work, job satisfaction, engagement at work, and then overall wellness and performance too. So all of that is really important. And obviously something that we care about a lot is making these positive work environments. So it's just like another, another thing, another benefit of creating that type of culture around learning and openness and being able to forgive others and admit mistakes and not have a fear of that, right? All of those things can really make an incredible work environment that will allow people to thrive. And this is just another reason that you should do that, that organizations and leaders should create these types of types of cultures because they'll be able to get the best out of their teams and themselves in the workplace. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's right. Well, thank you so much for sharing this article. Um, It is really interesting and definitely not a topic that we see a lot. So I appreciate hearing about it. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Hopefully people will uh, try to think about their own attitudes towards forgiveness, uh, not just for the purpose of their leader feeling better, but for their own purpose of enhancing their well-being and their satisfaction. Yes. Agreed. And we'd love to hear from all of you. So please... Let us know um, if you've had any interesting experiences with leaders and forgiveness. Um, We're always curious to hear your stories. And I also want to plug our retreat again, but also want to mention the January 26th meetup for those LA folks. I know we talked about it before, but we want to remind you that it's coming up and we're really excited and to sign up to our for our email list if you want to hear more about our events in the future so contact us at workerbeing at gmail.com you can find us on our website workerbeing.com where we have a sign up to our email list where we can send you all the information about events in the future and of course reach out to us on social media as well at Worker Being on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Thanks for listening. The Worker Being Podcast is hosted by us, Patricia Grabar and Katina Sawyer, and produced by Allie Johnson. 